who thinks that going out to a birthday party means that you need to bring a knife and take it out and be stupid enough to not think that your actions couldn't end this way. Ziggy Worrell Awusu grew up in East London. He'd recently started an apprenticeship and had a promising career ahead of him. But family was always the most important thing in his life. He juggled his work alongside caring for his mum. She's deaf and she's blind, so she does require somebody to be here with her. Ziggy was a massive part in helping her with that. That's just a role he took on because that was the boy he was. Oh, I was very, very proud of him. Uh, I always enjoyed his company. He was my best friend. He was into rugby, he liked playing football, he liked dancing, music, really loved his PlayStation. He was like, having fun, whatever it was, he was up for it, but sometimes he just liked to stick to himself sometimes. He was always just like a good person, like somebody that you know that you could tell things to and that cared about you, cared about people, and just somebody with a good spirit that would do good and would be, be a great man. In October last year, Ziggy's friends convinced him to go on a rare night out. It was his 19th birthday. They headed to the basement lounge shisha bar in Goodmay's Ilford. There's about 150 people at the party, so it would have been really packed. And they're all of Ziggy's age, college age, 18, 19 year old people, lots of people Ziggy knew, most of the people from the East London area. It was a no alcohol venue, but drinks were brought in. And although the dress code was smart, groups began to arrive wearing hoodies and sportswear. Ziggy and his friends moved to the dance floor area, but it wasn't long before things started to get out of control. A firework was let off and people thought it was a gunshot. The mood settled, but fights were beginning to break out. Later, there was a commotion, and witnesses say that Ziggy stepped in. It wasn't the kind to get, like, angry, get into fights, get involved in anything that could escalate to that point. Jermaine had warned Ziggy about playing the peacemaker in the past. We're telling him, don't do that, cos you're going to get hurt. He's like, no, I won't, I won't. I was like, just stop it. Because you don't know who these people are. I said, you're the one that ends up with a knife in your chest. And I always used to tell him, you'll be there stopping it. Just don't get involved. Amongst the chaos, Ziggy was attacked. Ziggy backed away and staggered towards the exit. CCTV cameras outside the shisha bar caught the aftermath. About 12.40 a.m., we see most of the people emptying out from the, the club, and I believe that's when people have realised what's happened to Ziggy. The knife had cut through two major blood vessels, and within minutes, Ziggy had collapsed. At 1.45 a.m., he was pronounced dead. The family got the call to say that he had bled to death. There is absolutely like a million things I would have predicted that call to be. Not one thing, not one single idea. No way would it be that Ziggy's been stabbed and he's dead. The actual murder of Ziggy may have been very quick and very quiet. He's received one stab wound, and that could have been over in a split second. This event has completely devastated his family and the local community where Ziggy is from. We all just want to put a picture together so we can grieve. It's not enough to lose somebody, it's just not knowing why. Not that it makes it any better, but understanding why lives and families are torn apart and ripped to shreds and then you're just left to put everything back together, not even knowing how this even happened in the first place. <laughs> 